What is a Puritan? Hmm. A Puritan is a member of a 17th century Christian religious sect that emigrated from England to what is now the United States. Their beliefs have had a profound influence on American society for hundreds of years. Now, this is a pretty good definition of what a Puritan is, but it's also incredibly simplified. And that's because Puritanism was a 150 to 200 year movement that spanned two continents and included multiple theological views or ecclesiologies. Now, Puritanism ultimately originated with people who are unhappy with the English church. And while these unhappy people go in a number of different directions, what they share is a conviction that those who have leadership in the Church of England are wrong. Now, we could talk a lot about the monarchy, but we're going to start all the way with Elizabeth I, who came into power on the 2nd of June in 1553. And we're going to talk about why Puritanism arose beneath her rule. And just to give you an idea of how the timeline's working right now, in the New World, Christopher Columbus has already sailed the ocean blue in 1492 in the Santa Maria to the Caribbean. So the New World has already been discovered for a while before Elizabeth I comes into power. Now the term that we want to know about Elizabeth's rule is Adiaphora. Now, adiaphora are the practices and doctrines that are neither required nor forbidden in the Bible, and therefore they're considered the non-essentials. They are rules created by church leadership um, based upon their own personal desires for the church and not because the Bible dictates it. Now, why did Elizabeth like adiaphora? She liked it because it promoted conformity in the church. Now, in the past, Dissenters had caused tension, division, and death. And Elizabeth didn't want this for her rule. She wanted conformity because with conformity comes peace. And therefore, she liked the adiaphora. However, not everyone liked the adiaphora. Early Puritans did not want to have adiaphora required of them, where they were told what they could and could not do based upon the wishes of church leadership and the monarchy. They wanted to worship in the way that they saw best fit. Now, after Elizabeth passes away, on the 24th of March, 1603, King James comes into power. And King James follows Elizabeth's lead. He wishes for conformity in the church, uh, where he supports those who essentially don't rock the boat. And therefore, the demands and the complaints of the early Puritans are at odds with James and his wishes for his reign. Now, just to let you know what's going on in the New World during this time, in the first years of James's rule, in 1607, the first permanent settlement of, yes, Jamestown, named after him, is established. Now, we know Jamestown because it was the first permanent settlement in the New World, and it was a mercantile colony, and the people who colonized it were subjects of the English crown who wanted to develop businesses that benefited the monarchy back in England. Now, Back in England, James did not persecute or kill people for disagreeing with him. The only consequences that he were had under James is that for those who did not conform to the church, the leaders who did not conform lost their position in that church. So those were the only punishments that he was handing out. However, even though he wasn't, say, hanging people and burning people at the stake, um, with some exceptions, there was an evolving desire to separate under James I, to separate from the church, and where they desired to practice religion on their own terms. Now, meanwhile, in the New World, while all of this is happening, in 1620, separatists, who we call the Pilgrims, set sail to Plymouth on the Mayflower in hopes of being able to practice religion on their own terms without the authority of James I ruling over them. Now, let's focus on these pilgrims for a little while and go over to the New World and leave the monarchy out of it for a bit. So the separatists set sail to Plymouth on the Mayflower in 1620, and what they want is a new way of life and freedom of religion, and therefore they separate from the church, which is why they're called the separatists. But we do want to make sure we understand the difference between separatists and Puritans. There is a difference between pilgrims and Puritans. So pilgrims want to separate from the Church of England, which means they are no longer a part Part of the Church of England. Now the Puritans do not separate. They want to purify the church um, and they 
mis mistrust those who disagree with them because the Puritans felt like they were the chosen people. Now, separatists and Puritans do have a great deal in common like their religion, the fact that they're both in Massachusetts, and the fact that they disagree with the Church of England. But just make sure you understand the difference between those two groups. Now, I hope you liked my fancy graphic. All right, so now the pilgrims, they land in Plymouth, Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts on the Mayflower. And while they're on the Mayflower, they sign the Mayflower Compact, which is the first form of government in European tradition in the New World. And it's a covenant for religion and political autonomy and the first constitution in North America. Pretty impressive. Now, the pilgrims arrived, and when they arrived, they had their first winter, and that tested the pilgrims. They died of hunger, disease, and their population was reduced by half. However, once they came through that winter, they became a healthy and thriving community. So while all this is happening over in the new world let's go back to england so charles the first had created a great deal of oh we got to talk about charles the first so charles the first creates a great deal of division he comes into power on the 25th of march in 1625 and he is a very different kind of monarch so charles the first was raised to understand that he like all kings were ultimate authority selected by god in this line of reasoning kings would have to answer for their actions in the afterlife if they committed atrocities not supported by god now james his, Charles I's predecessor, believed in the absolute rule of kings, but he tempered this with the will of God and his desire to do God's wishes. In contrast, Charles I felt like his role was ultimately to tell people what to do, and he was aggressively in favor of his own authority over governing bodies like Parliament. And this created a great deal of tension and division, which we know oftentimes leads to death, foreshadowing. So, now, Charles I supported anti-Puritan the theology, and he brings about aggressive movements that set Arminianism and Calvinism against one another. And during this movement, doctrines were put into place in opposition to Puritan theology. Now, what does this mean? So, it means division. So, Calvinism, people in support of Calvinism and people in support of Arminianism are put into divisive uh, positions. So, ultimately... John Calvin, who the Puritans based a great deal of their beliefs upon, was a French theologian who lived from 1509 to 1564, and he wrote on Institutes of the Christian Religion, and he wrote a great deal on predestination, the idea that God chooses those who are saved before they are even born, and people are only saved by God's mercy. And he also wrote a great deal on the shame and guilt that men should feel because of their own depravity, and the fact that sin is ultimately inevitable. And so that is what Calvinism... Uh, uh, that's what Calvin wrote on and what the Puritans based their beliefs largely upon. So while all of this is going on, the Puritans, who believe in John Calvin's writings, arrive in 1632 Salem. And to give you an idea, America doesn't become the United States until 1766. So this is a great deal before the Revolutionary War and before the Declaration of Independence. Now, non-separatists are different from separatists. So remember, pilgrims are the separatists, Puritans are non-separatists. And I uh, encourage you to pause the video and take a look at this even fancier graphic to refresh your memory as to who the Puritans and the pilgrims are. But the pilgrims who came in 1620 are then followed by the Puritans in 1630. And there are a great deal of differences between them. And the differences between Pilgrims, Puritans, and Quakers is actually one of the strongest influences on the way shapes were created in New England and why we have the states we do have today. Now, focusing in on the Puritans, the non-separatists, uh, they were led by John Winthrop. And in 1630, John Winthrop and 900 Puritans established the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And this colony is where the books we read, The Scarlet Letter and The Crucible, take place. Now, John Winthrop wanted to create a city upon a hill, creating his own culture and the people with him creating their own culture as the chosen people. And in one decade, the population booms. 10,000 Puritans migrate to the city upon a hill, and also 10,000 additional people who are fleeing hard times in England also show up. 
So while all of this is happening beneath the rule of John Winthrop in the New World, let's go back to England and see what's happening. So Charles I created a great deal of division amongst the people beneath his rule, and because of that, his head ultimately gets divided from his body. He gets beheaded on the 30th of January, 1649. And ultimately, this then leads to the Civil War in England. However, in 1660, the monarchy is reestablished with Charles II being restored to the throne in the Restoration. And if you're curious what's happening in the New World all this time during the Civil War, from 1620 to 1640, the Great Migration has already occurred where the majority of Puritans have already gone to the New World. So all that's already happened before Charles II comes into power. So we're almost done talking about monarchy. But what we do need to know is that in 1662, beneath Charles II's rule, the great ejection occurs. And what Charles II wants to do is get rid of any diversity that had emerged um, in the church during the Civil War. And he expels 2,400 priests. The priests are removed from the church because they do not want to conform to Charles II's vision for the church. Now, this creates a divide lots of division this seems to be a running theme this creates a split between people who are tired of the fighting and who want peace and this ultimately weakens theological convictions it weakens doctrines and these groups of people who want peace are called the latitudinarians and they want to focus on one church that has pluralism now the latitudinarians are um, in division with those who want separation and to intensify puritanism and these people are called dissenters so it's the latitudinarians against the dissenters and the dissenters are many different peoples these are people who will eventually flee and they include groups like the quakers the ranters, the Sabbatarians, the Muggletonians, the Familyists, the Seekers, the Puritans, and the Brownists. And if some of those words sound like it comes from Harry Potter, you are not mistaken. It's worth looking into. All right. So dissenters are not allowed to meet privately and they're thrown into jail and because they want to create their own church and they can't. And therefore they flee and go to the new world. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna stop this video and you can go to video number two and we're going to look more closely at Puritan culture in the new world. I'm done talking about all that monarchy stuff. All right, I'll see you in the next video.